place of labor. Mike, does your wife realize how many projects you've got on the go? Oh, I think quite, probably better than I do. Uh, I get reminded daily about uh, how many things we're doing and which ball we're juggling today. So. Now, we have just in, uh, added a uh, new airplane to your stable of aircraft. What's this uh, airplane here called? It's, this is the uh, Early Bird Jenny, uh, JN4 Jenny. Uh, it's a steel tube fuselage airplane, um, two place. Uh, it's been out approximately 10 years, and they've been flown all over the world. Uh, it's a replica of a, a JN4 Jenny, uh, just you know, war, after World War One. And you're offering them now, uh, this is a kit uh, from Moley? Yes, um, it's a kit to begin with as far as a materials type kit. Um, and at that point, we're actually bringing out uh, pre-welded components such as pre-welded fuselage, tail, landing gear, wing fittings, and the long-range goals to actually make uh, pre-assembled wings to where it's a quick-build kit for the folks that want it. Uh, now, this one here has also got a different engine on it. It's not powered by a Rotex. Yes, uh, this particular airplane... Uh, here and have a look at it here. This uh, particular airplane is being built by uh, Dennis Wiley, the actually de the actual designer of the Jenny, and um, he's had so many requests over the years for four-stroke engines. Uh, he's flown a lot with the Geo Metro engines, and this time uh, he's looking at putting in a, a single or a two-cylinder Franklin engine, certified engine from uh, years ago. So just as an alternate engine, to let them know there is something different. Uh, Primarily uh, looking at Rotax 582 is uh, one of the common engines. Uh, a lot of the guys are doing the Geo Metros, and eventually we'll be looking at probably the 912 in the front of them. Now, we've got, as I mentioned, a whole bunch of things over here. What's uh, this airplane here? Yes, this is a um, what we call the aluminum biplane line. It's uh, an airplane that uh, basically is all aluminum airframe. It comes to the uh, kit builder as pre-manufactured components. Uh, fuselage is pre-built, the wings are all factory built, tail assemblies and landing gear. So essentially the customer is uh, taking and, and installing systems, control cables and throttling and then covering the airplane. And they can be built either as a, a SPAD 13, a Fokker D7 or an SE5A. And this airplane in turn uh, weighs in uh, between let's say ultralight and 300 pounds. Uh, it is single seat. Now what about the building times on the airplane? Uh, uh, is this something like, uh, say you were to take your most complete kit that you can ship out, is he still going to take like five, six hundred hours to complete? No, this airplane, your primary job is putting the fabric covering on. When you get, uh, for instance, over here we have a wing, and the wing, the way it comes to the customer, within the first hour you can start putting fabric on it, simply by cleaning off the metal uh, with thinner and, and start applying the cement. Let's go have a look at the wing then. Okay. You're telling me your supply is built like this? Yes. Complete. All four wings are built. Center section is built. Uh, tail surfaces are built. This is a, a landing gear or a fuselage landing gear that's actually out of a kit, the same as this wing. So when they get it, they're basically doing the fabric work. And in turn, uh, very lightweight. And all of them built out of factory jigs. Now, we go then from metal over onto... Our Mustang, is this a Mustang? This is a Spitfire prototype. Well, oh, this is the new one that came out at uh, Oshkosh last year. Right, right. Now, there was a story behind this, that uh, how you got it, uh, got the design rights to it, I guess. Well, what we've done is we had a, uh, a local aeronautical professor that uh, came in our door one day, and he wanted to go ahead and build a, one of our airplanes. And the more we got to work with Dr. Flandro, we realized that his real heart was in a Spitfire. Um, after we got to know him a little bit, we realized that uh, the man's credentials, you, you at times hear that um, you don't have to be a rocket scientist. Well, this fellow are a rocket scientist. Um, he was actually credited with plotting the course for the Voyager spaceship. So, but in doing so, the Spitfire was his favorite airplane, and he basically took materials and the design methods that we use for our 5151 and the P-40 and uh, started working on a Spitfire. And in doing so, um, this is the result of it, and it's kind of what we call an elite airplane. It's the next in a series of our designs. Instead of, let's say, an 80-mile-an-hour cruise speed like in the Mustang and P-40, uh, this one's aimed at faster, 105 cruise, 140 V&E, that sort of thing. And uh, how's the kit coming to the customer then? The kit is a little unusual for us. Um, what we've done is we've tried to take and learn from the Mustang and P40 program everything that builders have taken a lot of extra time making, all the extra bells and whistles that they make custom, we've tried to include as a standard part of the kit package here. 
uh, all fiberglass components, nose cowlings, uh, electric start, wing fairings, brakes, instruments, interior, everything it takes uh, through fabric on this airplane is being done as one individual kit. Now we're going to slip over to the other side here, but i got to change tape, so just sure. be a minute. Yes, uh, presently the airplane is being set up with the Rotax 582. Um, the long range goal will be the 912 as an option in the airplane. Um, on all our replicas of World War II line, the problem has been with the horizontal engine, such as the 912, is the width of the cowling area, trying to keep the engine enclosed and not spoil the, you know, the replica look. Uh, once we've gone over to the fiberglass cowling arrangements, uh, we have the capability of spreading them out slightly and still keeping the look, and at that point we'll be looking at the 912 also. Now, uh, this is uh, the, the, next line, the next aircraft in the line is what? The one we've got over here. This is the... This is the uh, P-40 Flying Tiger, and this particular airplane uh, first made its debut, I guess, in 1993, and it was, uh, it's been in the air ever since as a demo airplane for us. Uh, essentially, it's an offshoot of our 5151 Mustang. Um, internally, the components are virtually identical to the Mustang. Um, we changed wing tips uh, from a Mustang to rounded for P-40, changed some of the nose, the stringer look as far as the, uh, to make it a P-40. Um, but it's the uh, same basic proven airframe that we've used on our Mustang. Now, uh, if someone uh, is out there and is looking at getting into something like this, what kind of time should they be looking at to actually finish the, uh, the completed kit off? Okay. The, the one thing that we've kind of found uh, as a manufacturer, and probably every manufacturer will back this up, the question is, uh, what is the build time? And tongue-in-cheek, the first thing we say is, how many modifications are you going to make to the kit? Um, we've seen airplanes uh, under 500 hours for a basic stock airplane with fixed gear. Uh, we've seen them as high as 2,000 hours, depending on which bells and whistles. Um, to give an example, if a person, let's say a retired fellow, starts building his Mustang, in six months we're usually seeing them in the driveway ready to cover. The disadvantage is many times, two years later, they haven't started putting fabric on because they're adding little things they want to personalize their airplane with. So our airplanes are aimed at, at roughly a, a five to eight hundred hour kit for the items we send out the door. What kind of basic knowledge would somebody need to finish one of your kits off though? Like that? But this end of it uh, is simply a wood airplane. Uh, all the parts are pre-cut. So as far as having to be a you know meticulous woodworker with a big wood factory in your shop, there's none of that. There's not even a table saw or band saw required to build the airplane. Uh, but basically what you're doing is taking uh, two-part epoxy, mixing it together, and joining the pre-cut wood components. The number one thing that we find in any of our airplanes, uh, as far as a builder requirement, is just their self-confidence. Once they get the first couple of weeks under their belt, they're off and running. Then their confidence level goes out the window. Um, the airplanes, any of them, are really easy. Now, Mike, this airplane and this airplane and the other airplanes are all... Uh, dollars and cents wise maybe in the upper scale. Do we have anything for that guy that wants to just get oh, out there and fly? We do, but it's it's been amazing. Um, the, last year at this show I had people coming in wanting to know um, why it costs less money for a P-51 kit than it did for a powered parachute. So it's it's been amazing for us. I think the the uh, experienced kit maker from that's been in the business over 10 years or so, most of us are probably underpriced our components compared to some of the modern things that have come out on the market. But we, we will always think of the home builder to begin with. Uh, my heart started in the ultralights, and uh, we have one airplane that doesn't really fit our true replica image, but it's a little sport parasol. We got one of those over here. Yes. Uh, yes. 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 But it's, it's just... Yes, this little sport parasol, um, our actual kind of slogan for the airplane was back to basics and low cost. Uh, the purpose behind it, I had just come off the um, building our 5151 Mustang. Uh, coming out of the ultralight industry, you know, we always tried to design and keep things simple. Um, with our Mustang, we'd gone to the point of not only um, a replica airplane such as a Mustang look, we had a cantilever wing, which is a fairly complex situation. Um, multiple fuel tanks in the airplane, three fuel tanks, retractable landing gear. So my heart decided maybe I needed to listen to some of the people that were walking the flight line, come out with a simple airplane again, low cost and easy to build. The parasol really is a combination between um, what Bernie Piedenpole did with his air camper and what Ed Heath uh, did in the 30s and 40s with uh, those simple airplanes. And in turn, we call this a little sport parasol. 
and uh, we've even kind of, as a tribute to Bernie, call uh, one version of it the air camper because it has a lot of storage capability, uh, storage up front and behind the seat for a person that wants to actually go out and do a little camping and so on. Now, I visited your website, and when you look at it, there are a lot of these little airplanes out there uh, being built and being flown right now. Certainly. It's, uh, it's a very popular airplane. Um, it's a simple airplane to build. But when you're done with it, it becomes a true little airplane. Uh, it's very easy to fly, but some of our best customers with these airplanes are actually pilots that have had cubs and champs over the years. And this is just a little simpler way that they can fly, uh, especially under the ultralight category without the medical requirement. And it's, uh, it's a true little airplane. You can run along at 60, 65 and land on any ultralight strip. If someone wanted to get more information on your complete uh, line of uh, aircraft, uh, how do we get a hold of you, Mike? Yes, uh, you can call us at our factory in Middle Tennessee. We're located um, just below Nashville, Tennessee, and that would be area code 931-857-3419, or you can visit our website at lowly.com. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.